Have you got any official documentation or passports? No. Are you a British citizen? Yes. Have you been here before? Who are you? I am in charge of the island. I'm 28 years old and I live in Bow, East London. Well, kind of. You see, a little over six months ago, I decided to start my very own country. Little did I know I'd end up travelling tens of thousands of miles, meeting world leaders and convincing thousands of people to become my citizens. Well, you could help me shape a nation. I'd even get my face on a stamp. My quest would take over my life. You know, the authorities were called, the police turned up. I'd end up in prison with a bunch of men in pink underwear. <laughs> I'd fire my first gun. I, I want to run away. Well, it's more of a response that we usually see in women. I'd take the advice of renowned thinkers. Don't come to me with problems, Chomsky. Come to me with solutions. And I'd find myself on a diplomatic mission. Thanks, Thanks for that. <laughs> Thank you. My journey from being Mr. Danny Wallace of London, England, to being King Danny, ruler of a brand new country, began after I heard about a place called the Principality of Sealand. Um, it's about a place called Sealand. It was a rusting war fort just six miles off the coast of England, and it claims to be an independent state. But they seem to think um, it's, it's their own kind of country. I couldn't see how it was possible to have a whole country based on a war fort in the middle of the North Sea. I spent ages phoning around. Well, I need to know, really, whether it's British um, or whether it's Sealandish. And not even the Foreign Office could tell me if it was well, a real country or not. I don't think there's been an established answer. In the end, I decided the only way to find out would be to go there myself. That's it. That's Sealand. It looks a bit like an oil rig. I can't believe it is a country. You know what I mean? It can't. It's just a thing in the sea, surely. Wow. I'm going to try and make contact. People of the Principality of Sealand. My name is Danny. Hello. Uh, I was wondering if I could find out about your customs and your ways. Hello? My name is Danny. I'm on a little vote. There's someone there, there's someone there, there's someone there. Hello. Hello. I come in peace, uh, and I was hoping I could have a word with someone. Would you be Prince Regent Michael? Yeah, I'll come down. He's going to come down. He's actually going to come down. <laughs> wow, a man is being winched onto my tiny boat. How cool is this? Ahoy. Burly man, coming aboard. Excellent work. Hello. Well done. That was very impressive. I tell you, if I had one of them, I'd be on it all day. So thank you very much for uh, for meeting with me. Um, I just heard about Sealand, and I wanted to find out some more. So what is it? Uh, it's basically a, uh, an old wartime fortress that's been declared independent uh, for about the last 40 years. And Britain are cool with this? Britain are cool with it, yeah. This fortress was built during the time of war, right? It was built illegally in, in, in international waters. Um, nobody bothered at the time because of war going on. After the war, it was maintained for a few years and then abandoned. The British government should have destroyed it. They'd gone again against every international convention in not destroying it. And we took it over. So why, why, why was it done? Why was it declared independent? Now, that's a really awkward question, isn't it? Um, my father was involved with pirate radio years ago. So originally he came here with the idea of continuing with his radio station. And then one night he had to... He wasn't having a drink with his lawyer friend. He had a bizarre idea of forming an independent state. When you say he was having a drink, I mean, well, how many drinks had Pat? Well, exactly, I mean, yeah, to do that. quite a few, I'd imagine. Yeah. yeah. So how did it develop from there? I mean, because you, you've got your own flag now? We've slowly built up stamps, coins, passports, um, all the trappings you need for statehood. And you're a prince. How does that feel? 
the, the Prince thing was not for altruistic reasons, it was purely to simplify the law. Um, if you made a republic or, or whatever, you'd have to have like, a senate and law books. And you know, We're a very small family. It wasn't feasible. So I might do that. I'd quite, I'd quite fancy being a bit of a prince or a king or something. I wanted to just come here and find out about it, but actually I'm, I'm slowly kind of, you know, I think it's because you're a prince. I think that's kind of why... I mean, you know, we're not the most regal-looking <coughs> fellas in the world. You know, you and I. Uh -huh. But I reckon... You reckon that's the way? Well, I reckon if you can do it, I can. Come on, Wilde. He's off. See? See you later. Don't fall in. Oh, <laughs> I was convinced it was possible to start your own country. But the idea of living on a war fort in the middle of the North Sea wasn't perfect. But then, Britain isn't perfect either. I wondered whether I could do it, whether I could start my own country. Could I do any better? That night, I took my first step. Okay. Just trying to see what I look like. It's probably going to be King, isn't it? The next morning, I was ready for my first major challenge. I needed to find myself a territory. I found out about a man named Erwin Strauss. He'd written a book all about how to start a country. Trouble was, he lived 3,000 miles away. But if I was serious about starting a country, this was one man I had to meet. I got in touch, and he invited me to his flat in New Jersey. Hello, Hello. Erwin. Yes. I'm Danny. Oh, Danny. Nice yes. to meet you. How's it going? Just fine, thank you. Wow, what a place. Oh, glad you like it. Wow. This is like a mission control. Yes, yes. Well, I, I, I use it to control my life. Yeah? So, uh, and does that work? That, that seems to work for me, yeah. I kind of need some of that. You seem already a lot more organized than me, I can tell, just by the filing cabinets and stuff. Yeah, well, a lot of people have that reaction, but it, it's a way of life uh, to, to live this kind of life, and it doesn't suit my, many people. Right. But it does me. What are these? This is incredible. Is this some kind of filing system? Yeah, this is my uh, scheduling system. I uh, keep track of what I need to get done. So I, t I tend to be an absent-minded professor type. Myself, oh, really? So, uh, <laughs> Which makes you kind of the perfect man to talk to about starting my own country. Essentially, I've just, you know, I'm looking for a territory. One way is you can look for certain areas of the world where the legal regime is in some kind of doubt. One <clears throat> obvious place is Antarctica. Mm. One area has been left unclaimed, uh, the idea being that that would be the U.S.'s territory. However, the U.S. has a policy of not recognizing any claims in Antarctica. As a result, there is a wedge of land there that is under no national claim at all. Brilliant. The Greenpeace environmental protesters have established a base on the coast there and uh, have so far been basically left alone. And that's in, so this is Antarctica here? Because Greenpeace, they make nice neighbours. That's great. Look, Princess Elizabeth Land, Queen Mary Land. Yes, these are all named King, by the explorer. King Danny Land, do you think? Yes, yes. I could, I could do a little bit for you while I'm out there. It's going to be hard to get to, I'll be honest, from London. Uh, th there are some, some areas along the border of, of Spain and France which are in some, in some issue in the Pyrenees. This purple kind of, it's like a marker pen. Yeah. Roof. So that's kind of no man's one, land. One, yes, one could step in and make a claim. and Just uh, whack a flag down. Down and, uh, and be there. Well, that's, well, I mean, that's not bad, and the weather there's going to be all right. But what happens if you claim some territory that, that already technically is in another country? Well, then it becomes a matter between you and that country. In the 1980s, in the book, I suggest it's tongue-in-cheek, the, the mouse that roared strategy, where you get yourself a weapon of mass destruction and then threaten to blow up the place. Not blow up my own place, blow well, up. Well, if, if they attack, you would blow up your own place as well, but you would blow up them with you. I mean, where am I going to get a WMD from, though? Ah, uh, well, North Korea seems to be, uh, be selling them. There, there are some that could fit in a suitcase the size of the, the one that I have over there in the corner. That's not a weapon a basic of mass destruction. Four, a, ba a basic four-suiter. I have, I have been searched in the World Trade Center. I'm not uh, surprised. But it, it, All of a sudden, I'm slightly nervous. I don't want to go straight into that kind of... I'd rather do things diplomatically, you know, and, and, and make friends. So essentially, I've got a bit of a struggle ahead of me. There's, that's, that there's no doubt. Whatever, whatever. Irwin shared my concerns about the struggle that lay ahead and decided that a short burst of thought-provoking music might help me on my way. While I was in America, I took the opportunity to visit a man I'd known for ages, but never met. His name was Dennis Hope, and in the 1980s, he claimed a territory no one had ever thought to claim before. 
the moon. You must be Danny Wallace. Now he's head of the galactic government, and I'd arranged to meet him at his HQ on Earth, the Lunar Embassy. This is it. Would you like a tour? Yes, please. Great. Dennis seemed certain that the total colonization of the moon by human beings was just a few short years away. And these are all the documents that we send out to people that order property from us? So they can order property and they go, wow, look at this. Yeah, we just distribute it from right here. And how much this, moon would this get This me? would be for one acre. One acre. And how many people so far have bought some moon? Uh, in our last count, we had just at three million property owners in 180 countries on the planet. Three million? Mm-hmm. That must be half the moon. No. Uh, we've sold 412 million acres. And out of the 412 million acres that we've sold, we have about nine billion acres left. God, you'll be all right for a few years. So, I mean, how long, has, how long has this been going on? I mean, when did, you, when did you start and how did you start? It all started in uh, November 22, 1980. I looked out the car window at 2.30 in the afternoon, saw the moon, and thought, there's a lot of property. I went to the library, uh, researched the Outer Space Treaty of 1967, and found out that Article 2 states, no nation by appropriation shall have sovereignty or control over any of the satellite bodies. So it was property that was unowned, and not available to any government. So I filed a claim of ownership and sent it to the UN, the US, and the Russians. And that was kind of out of politeness. You, you, you let yes. them know. Yes, and I also put a note in there and requested of them that if they had a legal problem with what I'd just done, to let me know. And did they get in touch? I'm still waiting to hear from them. So they've got no problem with it, essentially? Well, you'd think after 25 years that they would... Uh, Someone would have said something. Yeah, and they have not. I liked yeah, Dennis. So maybe For a start, he'd yeah. offered to make me a cup of tea. Yeah, but also, program. he clearly had ambition. These are your goals, are they, for this year? Right. Ratify the Constitution for Galactic Government. You've, put, you've done that. Take that off. Right. Meet with President Bush in December. Discuss the lease of 30,000 acres for the USA on the moon. Will he be up for meeting, do you think? Well, he knows who we are, what we do. Um, he's also a property owner. He, he owns property yes. what, on the moon? Yes. Does he? Yes. Really? Yes. From you? Yes. No. Yes. Have you got that written down somewhere? Well... Yes. Can we see it? No. Oh. How much did he Let buy? Let me explain. Let me explain. Did he buy a rubbish little bit, or has he bought the best? There's one bit? acre. One acre. Right. Did he pay for it? Uh, no, it was a gift. You gave him some moon. It was a diplomacy move, <laughs> is what it was. I can also tell you that there are members of the royal family that are property owners. Which one? I can't tell you. You can't say. Was we it Prince Charles? I can't tell you who it was. You can mention was every Prince name. William? You can, was it Prince you William? Can, you can mention was it Prince William? every name. It was Prince William, wasn't it? No, You're it smiling. Wasn't. It wasn't. So it wasn't Prince William. It was. So it was Harry. I'm not telling you. It was Harry, it was. wasn't it? Was it? Was it Prince Harry? No. So it wasn't Prince Harry. It wasn't Prince William. Brilliant. I'm narrowing it down. Keen to change the subject, Dennis took me to see his website. He had an idea which he thought might help. Um, you could make the uh, website kind of like a passport. It's the way they get to their country. So the website could form part of the country. That is really good. That is really good. I think I've realized that, that I want a physical territory. That's still a problem I've got to deal with. But I can create something brilliant with cyberspace. Absolutely. So long as people believe in it. This is some great advice you're giving me here, Dennis. Well, I do like to talk. Dennis had inspired me. Back home, I immediately set about building a website, my very own cyber nation. I was convinced it would be a great place for people to find out about my country and maybe even sign up as citizens. But it didn't solve my problem of not having a physical territory. Hello. How's it going? I'm looking for a property. Do you like to buy or rent uh, I think buy, yeah. What's the biggest place you've got in the books? With regards to size or money? Uh, size, I think. Something quite big. Um, a lot of space. Um, gardens would be good, because um, I could build them. The agents all took my details and promised to call if they found a decent place for me to start my country. Ideally, something south-facing with a roof garden. I'll see you soon. A couple of days later, I got a call. A travel to Ireland. A castle on its very own island had just come on the market. Oh, there's the island. That was... Oh, wow. It sounded perfect. I'm quite sold on this already. I haven't even seen it properly. At just under £300,000, the castle island was a little out of my price range. Hello. But I was confident Hi, there'd yeah. be room for negotiation. Sean? This is Sean. Hey, Sean, I'm Danny. 
Hi, Danny. Nice to meet you. You're How's very you welcome to Ireland. Okay, yeah. that's the island then. That's the castle that's for sale. The castle. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Happy memories. I yeah. love the place. Yeah. But it's time to move on. Time to move on. Yeah. To a bigger island. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good for me. It's kind of a starter island. It's a starter island. All right. Yeah. Well, shall we? Yeah, we, we shall. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask, you don't mind me asking, can you swim? I can swim, yeah. I was yeah. actually uh, North Leicestershire under 13 breaststroke yeah. champion. Okay. Okay, Danny. Put your hand out to the wall if you can. That's it, Danny. Okay. Oh. And pull it in. Mind your head on the branches, Danny. Will do. Did you get scratched? Are you okay? I'm fine, yeah. Excellent work. Cool. Oh, wow. Look at this. We're actually entering the building just here. Keep clear. Dangerous buildings. Yes. I can see on your face that you're going to say that wasn't in the brochure, yeah? Yeah. I thought so. There's a bit of the wall missing. Just there, is it? Yeah. missing. Okay, that's a sentry box. Sentry boxes? Uh, do you see the, over there, oh, right? Because it looks like a yeah. tree. No, no, it's a sentry box covered in ivy. That's another sentry box. And I'll take you up and into You're not it. making this up, are you? No, no, I'll take you up on the wall. Mind yourself. Yeah. Now then, we're going oh. under the sentry box. Originally, there was cannons. Have you still got any? No, I haven't. I think they were all sold off. Uh. Now, this is simply a hall. Already, I like this room. There's, there's a lot of light. Yeah. There's a lot of light. I liked the island. It had potential. Oh, to sort that out. And with all the work that needed to be done, I felt I was in a strong position to haggle. Um, it's basically just, uh, you know, the delicate issue of money, really. I assume you have excess half a million, obviously. Well, you know... You wouldn't be here. I can offer you something maybe a little bit more interesting and exciting than, uh, than mere euros. I can get you in on the ground floor, you know. I can give you, you know, 500,000 of whatever my currency is, which would be worth, I'll decide, yeah. it's worth, you know, 3 million euros. You know, I think the difference between us... I think you're a ground floor person. I'm a top floor person. You're a top floor person uh, with no it, uh, stairs. Y- the haggling hadn't gone well. The next day, Sean raised the price and stopped taking my calls. But no matter, I'd already come up with a cheaper, better alternative. I'd found another island on the Thames. This one had old mod cons and was only minutes from the local pub. That is brilliant. The problem was, it wasn't for sale. And it was already occupied. This is Eel Pie Island over here. Now, don't get me wrong, I liked the other island. It had a lovely castle, some cracking views, it was fine. But this, this is ideally positioned for me. It's not too far from home either. A lot of people, when they're uh, claiming a territory, will invade a country. I got that from... uh, GCSE history. I only got a C and most of it was about crop rotation, but I do remember that specifically. So I'm going to try and nip over there and claim it as my own. Ah. Right. Okay. It was my first go at invading anywhere. It's just not something I was brought up to do. No, no, I'm going the wrong way. I'm going the wrong way. And it was proving tricky. Until... There's a footbridge. There's a footbridge. I could, have been, I could have been invading about 20 minutes ago. Invasion. Invasion, invasion. Please stay calm. I'm invading the island. Stay calm. Oh, excuse me. Where's a, where's a good place? I'm invading the island. Super island. I should invade over there? Yeah. Okay, thank you. I knew I couldn't take the whole island on my own, so I'd called for reinforcements. My friend John Bond had agreed to lend a hand. Here he comes. John, nice one. Come in, thanks for coming. John used to be a security guard at a Tesco in Preston. He was the closest thing to an army I could find. So you're all right with the mission? You know, it's, it's a, it, uh, we're going to do as the Americans do and win the hearts and minds of the people. Here they come. Just stay calm, lads. It's an invasion. Tell no one. Right? Just as you were. As you were, it's fine. See, like that. Firm but fair. Okay? Morning. Nothing to worry about. Just invading. Hi. 
Do you, oh, uh, do you live on the island? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm the new leader. No opposition. No opposition. That's no, been easy. All I do, I just walked across the footbridge. There is no need to be annoyed. Just call me leader. <laughs> leader. See please. you later. See you. Have you got any passport or any papers, any ID, anything like that? Afraid not. I will oversee in a kind of kingly capacity. <laughs> Make sure you're all right. John will get you coffees, things like that. It's going to be lovely. So we'll let you through. Thank you. Do not worry. Everything's fine. Hi. Hello. Just let you know, everything's fine. The rules are pretty much the same. Just keep out of mischief. Um, no running, though, OK? No running. Oh, God. Tie that up, please, John. I left John at border control and set off to explore my brave new world. Jesus. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Look, look, straight ahead. Oh, there's a military boat. Hello. Hello. Does this belong to you? It does, yeah. This thing? Yeah. This is fantastic. What is it? You're after, it's a duck, amphibious vehicle. It's like no duck I've ever seen. Sorry, I should explain. I've just... Uh, <laughs> I bought it from a handy duck dealer. A handy duck dealer. I've just... I, I've literally just invaded the island. So I read on the notices. You read the notices already? I've read the notices. Word you come spread. in peace. I do come in peace. Well, that's, that's absolutely fine. You're going to cut the... our taxes, I'm all for it. Well, we'll discuss that later today. Alex seemed happy that I was his leader and immediately offered to help me spread the word. People of Eel Pie Island, my name is Danny. There is no need to be annoyed. I'm a friendly invading force. Hello. Hail me as your leader. You may wish to applaud. Sir, that is an illegal hand gesture. That's very naughty. I'm coming back for you. Oh, hello. Someone's blatantly called the police. That's all right. Things have been going well until a worried Britain called in its defences in the form of the local police. Just to let you know, I'm securing this area. No invasion is without its troubles, but I was clearly outnumbered. We're coming back. We're coming back. Slightly annoyed, I handed the island back to the local authorities and went home to have another think. So, um, probably the biggest thing I learned yesterday um, was the importance of defence. You know... What happens if someone invades my country? I mean, I haven't got any defence. You know, I haven't got a police force or an army to turn up and just look at me and just go, off you go, like I did yesterday. I've got, none, I've got John Bond, you know? That policeman, that was a, that was a master stroke on, on the part of the authorities. It was just his presence. And then I was gone, wasn't I? I was gone straight. I just saw that. I just thought, I can't deal with that. That's the kind of image I need to get. I need to get an army that people just aren't going to mess with or some kind of defence system that people just go... Best leave it. I decided if you can't beat them, you may as well join them. Yes, yes, yes. This is what I'm talking about. Look at that. I went to Salisbury Plain to see if I could make an ally of the British Army. I just noticed there's soldiers everywhere. <laughs> That's the beauty of camouflage. That's why I've come like this. All they can see is a floating denim jacket. Is that normal? Is it? I'm not going to stand next to it next time. I met nice with to... Major General Andrew Graham, a man very experienced in defending countries. Do you ride them often? No, I'm an infantryman. Are you an infantryman? We walk. You walk or if around. we're lucky, we get into an armoured personnel really? car, which takes I imagine that would be like your company car or something. No, sadly not. I need to find out about this stuff. See, the thing is, I'm, I'm starting my own country. Right. I'm not very far down the line. OK. But I've, I've kind of started to think about defence. Yes. Have you got a country? I've got a country in that in the I've said, right, I, I, I'm starting one. So you've got no territory? Well, not really. It might be that I have to take it. I mean, taking means you need perhaps an armed force before you start it in order to decide to go and invade a country. But that's, that's the sort of behaviour that, you know, in today, in the 21st century, it's not likely to make you many friends. But I don't want enemies. Right. But, I mean, there's no, is there such a thing as a kind of peaceful invasion? Could I do it peacefully? I'm not advocating invasion. I okay. think you need to get your territory by other means. So, so why does a country need an army? Many would say that the prime purpose of a government or a king is to protect the livelihoods, the lives and the property 
on the well-being and interests of its citizens. So, from that perspective, if somebody's likely to attack your interests, then perhaps you need to have an armed force to make sure that they can't do it, or at least think very hard about it. And also, I mean, in the 21st century now, increasingly, armed forces are a force for good. You know, humanitarian issues, peacekeeping, even Iraq. I mean, that was a, an, an objectionable regime. And um, we now have an Iraqi people who can start to see um, where they might move forward as a country not under the heel of a dictator. Well, you know, armed forces made that possible. If I've got even 10% of something like this, yeah. no one's going to mess with me. But the other way is to say, well, if I'm going to play my part in the international community, there are going to be treaties, organisations like NATO or the United Nations, and you might add your piece to what others can provide to give you a cohesive, integrated force. Well, how can I make sure that you guys will, will support me, will kind of be my allies? Is Talk. there a way talk like this approach the united nations and of course it won't be that's not a military decision well you can put it's a word a, in surely we can put a word in yeah. but ultimately it's a political decision okay so i knew the major general wasn't keen on the whole invasion thing but i thought that now we were mates i'd give it one last go what if i had to tell you there was a ferry leaving at two o'clock on saturday headed right. for calais me what? you a couple of your mates john bond we yes. could take france <laughs> we could split it it's a lovely idea yeah it's a lovely idea are you up for it no, I don't think so at this stage. The Major General was right. If I was to be accepted into the international community, it was vital that my country was a force for good. I hope this means we're allies now. Someone take a picture, quick. Allies! But even as a defence force, the army wouldn't be much use unless I had somewhere for them to defend. Back at the flat, I thought night and day about how I could solve my problem of not having a territory. And then, at about 6.28 on a Sunday morning... I think I've got it. Look. Why can't this be a country, you know? All the time I've, I've been thinking about this territory problem, I've been thinking about where I can set up my country, and all along I've had territory, you know? I've had this place. Why can't this be a country? So I phoned Ordnance Survey and instructed them to come round and update their maps. Have you done many flats? None. First time I've done a new country as well. Really? With the borders of my flat officially drawn, it was time to warn the neighbours and hold a press conference. Inspired by similar visionaries and by the simple fact that it is possible and it sounds fairly easy, yesterday afternoon, in a proud and confident voice, I declared this land my own. I have started my own country. You are sitting in it. I was happy. It was all coming together. But in the interests of international friendship, there was still one thing left to do. I'm starting my own country. I'm just off to tell Tony. I had to deliver my declaration of independence to number 10. Just park up, not in this snow parking oh, bit. Me if I stop here. Yeah. Along with a note Brilliant. saying that should they have any concerns, all they had to do was ring me. Oh. Right. Oh, blimey, here we go. Hi. Well, I'm a king. I've, I've got my little country. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. So, here we go. I'm just leaving that for Tony. Now that I had my territory sorted, I was certain it wouldn't be long before everything else fell into place too. If you'd like to find out more about my country, visit my cyber nation at citizensrequired.com. And if you're a digital viewer, press red now where I'll be taking your calls live on Citizen TV.